shine a light on the positive side of every journey. Our platform is dedicated to celebrating the success stories and unique experience of people from all walks of life, regardless of their fame and background. Whether you're a well-known figure or just starting out, the Successful Toy Podcast is here to share your story and inspire our listeners with your achievements and insights. Join us as we explore a diverse range of topics and uplift voices that deserve to be heard. Everyone has a story to tell and we are here to listen. Hey y'all, hey, so I'm back with another episode. Yes, yes, yes. How y'all doing today, my toy talkers? So I'm kind of getting the hang of pot being, but the only thing I'm having a problem with is when my guest trying to join. That's why y'all is getting a lot of music promos okay because i made this switch at the last minute this wasn't supposed to happen until my season five but god said "Uh -uh, i need this to happen sooner than later so that's how i got here okay but the only thing i'm having a problem with when i'm sending the links to my guests they're having a hard time one of them had a problem with the um the link on the phone at first and then they had to get on the website then the other one had a problem with the website and they had to get on their phone so it was like it's vice versa so today i hope and pray i don't have that problem so until my guests get here we're going to play some music, okay? So let's get into it and sit back and enjoy the episode. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hi, yep. Hey, I don't know what's going on. I am new to the platform and it's either every time a guest try to join, when they try from their phone, it won't work. Then they go on the computer, it work. If they go on the computer, it won't work. If they go on the phone, it work. Like, I don't know what <laughs> is going on, but I am glad you are here. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. So let the, introduce yourself to the people. Uh, sure. I'm Marianne. Um, I'm in uh, Vancouver, Canada, uh, up here on the West Coast. Um, I run the Systems Queens. Uh, we're a, a business systems and processes and automations type company. Um, I'm a single mama 
um, with a, an eight-year-old daughter and uh, a doggo. Period. So are you ready to get into these questions? Because I have some questions. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> what inspired you to specialize in organizing high-level information into manageable steps for businesses? Oh, uh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, what inspired me? Well, uh, I started as a Salesforce um, administrator, so that's a, a CRM out there that's that's very powerful and um, definitely requires studying and certification to become uh, well versed in it. I became an in-house Salesforce administrator at my job of ten years um, at a coaching college that I used to work at. And uh, I fell in love with the system and what it could do for the business in terms of organizing information and keeping everything streamlined and finding solutions for like process problems. So, you know, if the salespeople were, were like, man, this is a lot of steps to accomplish this one thing. I wish something could make it go faster. Then, you know, I kept being fascinated by how these systems could do these things for us. And, you know, you can do anything in there. And when I lost my job due to COVID in 2021, I thought, well, I, I have this skill and I really enjoy this kind of thing. So I think I should make, you know, a full agency out of this. And now we do not just Salesforce, but every system and, um, you know, many different processes and things like that. And I just love helping businesses to solve problems and get their systems to help them out. I love it. I love it. How do you approach analyzing a business system to ensure they are working effectively? Uh, how do we approach it? Well, we always start from the from the place of uh, mapping a client journey for a business. So um, we, we map the process or the journey that their clients or customers go in their um, lifetime with that business. So every time they have a touch point or every time they interact with that client uh, and that business, um, that's a becomes a point of their client journey. So we make sure that that is very mapped out and streamlined and that we know what's happening each step of the way for that journey and process. And then we're able to take that and look at it analytically and say, okay, in order to support this client journey, which features do you need to have in your business systems to support it properly? And then we can look at that and do like a deep dive research into which system might be best to suit their unique business. Also given their budget and how many users they might have and other programs are using and things like that. And then we can suggest the best systems for them. Got you. Can you share an example of a time when you helped a business transform its operation and reduce stress through your system management approach? Um, Yes, I can think of lots of times. Um, <laughs> um, well, for example, we we have people coming to us who, you know, they're generally in a in a state of growth for their business. Um, they're generally not brand new. They they may let's say they've been operating in multiple different systems. They've got like DocuSign for contracts and Calendly for booking appointments and. Uh, Stripe for, you know, sending invoices and receiving money and they're using a spreadsheet to track their clients. So they're bouncing around in all these different systems and they probably have even more than I just listed. And they're like, wow, like as I grow all of this bouncing around and these manual tasks, like it becomes so arduous and tenu uh, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's too much. Um, so we're able to take all of that and, you know, using that client journey process, really streamline everything and map it out and find instead one system that can do all of those things and even automate some of those steps for them. And uh, I think we, like save hours and hours of time in a week. Yeah. Where were you when I had my business up and running? Because that was definitely me. Like I had this out for this, this out for that, this for that. It was like so much to keep track of so i'm happy you came along and you helping business merge everything all together because i'm quite sure that takes away a lot of stress because that is very stressful oh thank you that's nice to say <laughs> <laughs> what are the most common challenges you see business businesses god lee i don't know why that wouldn't come out face <laughs> when their system work against them and how do you resolve them uh what do i see as their biggest challenges yeah, the most common challenges. Um, well, like I said, you know, bouncing around in multiple different systems is a challenge. Um, also, um, some people have like really 
really stringent ideas on what they want or need their systems to do for them. Like I need it to do this. I need it to connect to that. I need it to do this. And unfortunately, um, if you have too many of those, like not every system does everything. Like, you know, there's no, unfortunately, no one perfect system out there. So there's always going to be some sort of give and take. So I think a mistake that people can make is um, not clearly defining what are the deal breakers for you and what are the nice to haves uh, just in case you need to let something go in order to get those deal breakers because you might have like a pretty long list of deal breakers but your budget is pretty small for a monthly system um, right. which and that's an important factor is your budget so maybe if your budget is smaller you need to be more careful in what your deal breakers are and what you can let go of if you need to mm -hmm. you know and then you'll be happy for a while at least <laughs> Yeah, I like that because even as a podcaster, like I have different systems that I use and um, it's like I have to make sure because I use um, Swear for payments because mm -hmm. I have apparel also. So I built a website that I can link all of it together and they could just go on there. But it's like each section of the website, I had to connect the links from everything else. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, that's kind of for me, because like you said, it's all about budgeting. So for me right now, like that is the least headache that I have. So that mm -hmm. I have to run over there to Calendy and see who book. Then I got to go over there to see if I got an order over there to swear. Then it's like, great, it's just too much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sometimes it's deciding like what what headache can I manage right now? Right. <laughs> the least real. amount. Yeah. <laughs> How has working from your beautiful office in Maple Ridge in influenced your workflow and productivity? Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I work from home. That's what I meant by that. But, um, it, it, it helps me. I, my daughter is, um, on the spectrum and, uh, she's school aged. So, you know, it's been a bit of a rough journey getting here and getting her through kindergarten and grade one. And, uh, at first, you know, this business was super important to me because I was able to, if I needed to be, go go pick her up at the drop of a hat and bring her home if she was having a tough day or, um, you know, just being able to be flexible like that meant a lot to me. So being able to work uh, from home, I think, allows a lot of people that flexibility. Mm -hmm. And also I have my dog by my side all day, which is uh, good for the mood. <laughs> Because it is crazy that you brought up your dog because that was my next question. It says, as a single mother, how do you balance managing your business and your personal life with Ava and Bruno? <laughs> yeah, oh, you know their names. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so that was cute. I, but I get you like the flexibility because if you was in the corporate world working at someone's job, it'll hinder you from having to leave work always. You know what I'm saying? Because right. people be like, okay, you're not reliable because I need you here. But honey, my child come first. Yeah, exactly. And when I lost my job of 10 years in 2021, like obviously it was devastating because it was 10 years and I didn't expect it and um, it hurt. But, but looking back, I think it was absolutely what was meant to happen because, you know, right after that, we started our journey of, uh, neurodivergence and getting her diagnosed and everything. And if I was at that job, I, I probably would have lost it anyway, because I don't think they would have been flex as flexible, you know? So thank goodness. That happened to me before I was um, in a nursing field and I was a CNA, but I had a private client that I used to go and take care of her. So one day my son spacer fell out his mouth and I didn't think, <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't think it was important. So I was on my way to work, but I still like was calling the dentist to set an appointment. But when I called the dentist, they was like, no, you need to bring him in now. And I'm like, I'm on my way to work. And they was like, that's important. So when I got to work, I'm explaining to her and she tells me that she's more important than my son. And yeah, I had to leave. Yeah, you can find somebody else because baby, my kids gonna always come first. I'm sorry. Absolutely, definitely. That yeah, that wasn't the right place for sure. Yeah. What strategies do you use to main to maintain ease and reduce stress in your own life while helping others achieve the same in their businesses? Um. Well, that's a good question. Um. You know, you definitely have to remember to 
treat yourself as your own client now and then. So I, I mean, I'm guilty of forgetting to do that too, but, but regularly, you know, we go through our own systems and make sure that our own client journey is mapped out and that our systems are still supporting us because we've grown over the last three and a half years. And, you know, as you grow, you're, you might outgrow your systems and your processes, and you might need to to look at everything again and say, has anything changed? Is, is everything still supporting me well? Or maybe not, maybe it's time to look at things in a deeper way. So, you know, by doing that, we can, we can relieve some of the admin stress and uh, all of the different tasks that we have to do. And that is good. And then me personally, um, you know, I, I started meditating a couple of years ago and that really helps. And also going to bed early enough. <laughs> I don't go to bed early, but like I stopped going to bed at like midnight or 1 a.m. because that's just not good for my health. So I try to go to bed earlier. <laughs> right, you like me, I'd be going to bed late and then be waking up early. And I'm like, no, this is not healthy. I'm trying to put myself on a time limit, but maybe we'll never live by that schedule. <laughs> I know it can be hard, especially when you're a mom and then they go, the kids go to bed and you're like, okay, now it's me time. And then before you know it, it's 1 a.m. and I'm like, whoops, I have to get up at seven. That's not going to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do you stay organized when working with complete, complete, oh my God, complex. I don't know why I keep saying complete, complex, disorganized information from various clients. How do we stay organized? Yes when dealing with complex information? Yes, disorganized mm -hmm. information from various clients. Um, well, we work in a very process-driven fashion. Um, that client journey mapping uh, exercise that we do, we use a template that we developed um, that you know keeps everything fairly organized and it lists everything out step by step and what happens at each step and where is it happening and when is it happening? Like, is it being triggered by something else? Um, so in that way, things stay quite organized. And then we also use Asana, which is a, a project management system. Um, we use that to keep track of all of our client projects, everything that needs to happen within that project, who is supposed to do it, when they're supposed to do it by. Um, and the whole team uses that and adheres to it. So as long as everybody's doing the same thing and adopting the same processes and technologies, then things tend to stay more organized. That's good. What advice would you give to small business owners who feel overwhelmed by their current system and processes? Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed. Um, well, if everything's working well, you shouldn't feel overwhelmed. Uh, you should be able to feel comfort, comfortable and confident that your systems are working well and, and working for you. If you're feeling overwhelmed, then perhaps that's a sign that it's time to look at things again and and see if they are supporting you still and maybe there's room for growth there and something that needs to be addressed um and if you're overwhelmed by technology in general um i would i would say you know yes there's people like us who can help but before that there's also a lot of these systems have great support um so you know they have great customer support or they have great like knowledge bases where you can learn about them mm -hmm. and that would give you the confidence to be able to tackle your own systems a bit better a lot of them even have like live chat uh widgets so you can go to their website and just chat with probably at first a, a robot and then a human if you need so um <laughs> that can be helpful so there's ways to help yourself to feel more confident. And so I would say like asking yourself what's happening and looking at the ways you can address it. Love it. Last final question for the episode. What's your favorite part of helping businesses transform through better system organization and what impact does that have on their success? What's my favorite part about it and what impact does it have on their success? Um, I think I, I enjoy seeing, you know, the sense of relief come over, come over them when they realize that things are um, mapped out and streamlined and that their systems are going to be supporting them now and that they feel comfortable, um, you know, using their system moving forward uh, and trusting it. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to see that we can make that impact for people. And when they first come to us in those discovery calls, I can always sense how stressed some people are. And, you know, I let them, we, they, they, we talk and it's interesting sometimes to listen to the amount of 
of stress and and how long these people have been going through this and dealing with it and maybe backburnering it and thinking, oh, I'll deal with that soon, but then they don't and then the problem gets worse. Uh, and then the end of the project when they're all relieved and like, oh, thank goodness. Um, that That's a nice feeling. Um, and the second part of your question was, what impact does it have on them? Yes, what impact does that have on their success? Right. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I think I kind of spoke to it, but uh, lots, because uh, once they feel that, you know, things are working well and they're being supported, then they can focus on what they love and what why they started that business in the first place. And, you know, maybe they love being the dreamer CEO of their business and they haven't had time to do that lately because they're so mired down in all the admin tasks and things like that. Um, or maybe they really love doing sales, sales calls and networking and stuff, but they don't have time to do as much of that anymore because of all the operation things they have to do. So it's, you know, I think it has a huge impact on their success being able to refocus like that and use their time more wisely. Love it. So before I let you go, let the people know how they can find you, how they can hire you, everything you need them to know about you, your social medias, everything. Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, well, we have a website. It's uh, www.thesystemsqueens.com. And we're on Instagram at The Systems Queens. Um, we're on Facebook at The Systems Queens. We have a private Facebook group for business owners. It's a, I call it a system support group. So business <laughs> owners can ask their systems related questions and my whole team's in there and, you know, we're happy to jump in and answer questions and things like that. And uh, yeah, we're all over. Period. I want to say thank you for coming on Successful Toy Podcast, letting my audience know about your system and everything you have going on. I appreciate you. My platform is always open for you. But before I let you go, can you leave the audience with a positive word, a positive quote for today? Sure. A positive word. Um, I would say there's always another sunrise. And um if today hasn't gone the way you wanted it to there's always a tomorrow to start over love it so i want to say thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys in the next episode thank you tuning in to the successful toy podcast be sure to like follow and subscribe on youtube if you prefer to listen find us on spotify amazon music listening notes samsung podcast podcast index apple podcast and iHeartRadio. radio see you in the next episode bye